Normally on this channel, I like to talk about math and science in video games. Well, today we're doing something a little different and slapping that video right out the title and talking about some real honest to goodness games. In fact, we're talking about the staple of basically any game that you don't play on a screen. Dice. Baldur's Gate, that's a video game that uses dice. Hey, see, this still fits within the conceit of the channel. I'm not running out of ideas yet. In Baldur's Gate and the tabletop games it's based on, you will primarily be using a 20-sided die, a big old icosahedron. In these games, you'll often be given a set threshold that you need to meet or beat on your dice to, say, attack an enemy. Now, you could just roll a die, see what number comes up, and then see if it beats the threshold, but that's not very fun. That's basically just a slot machine. So to make things a bit more interesting, these games will usually provide you with some way of increasing your odds of success. The first is granting you a bonus to your roll. So, say, your character might get a plus 5 to all attack rolls. So, if you're trying to hit a 15 and you roll a 13, well, 13 plus 5 is 18, so you'd still succeed. The other way to improve your chances is by rolling more dice. Certain abilities in the game will let you roll two dice and pick whichever one is higher. This is often called rolling with advantage. Rolling this way increases your chances of rolling a high number simply because you got more dice. So, say in one of these games you have to choose between an ability that would give you a flat plus five bonus to a certain type of roll or one that would give you advantage on those same rolls. Which one would statistically be better? The answer is surprisingly complicated. This is the statistics of rolling with advantage. Richard, hit that intro. This video topic was voted on by all my patrons. These videos are really only possible with their support, so if you want to get access to all sorts of cool perks and ensure that I can keep making videos like these, then check the link in the description down below. Now, right out the gate, there are many cases in these games where you're rolling with both a bonus and advantage. In fact, there are very few times where you roll a die and don't add anything to it. But trying to calculate every single possible probability of success for every difficulty level with every reasonable bonus you might be rolling with, both normally and with advantage, is going to get so complicated that it's probably not going to be actually helpful to anybody. Luckily, though, there is an easier way. We often think of bonuses as adding to our roll, but we could also think of them as subtracting from the difficulty number. Uh, say you're trying to hit a 13, but you know that you're going to add 1 to whatever you roll on the die. Then the number you're actually looking to roll is a 12 or higher. So whenever I talk about a target number for the rest of this video, I'm talking about the number that you're trying to hit on the die. And when comparing advantage versus a bonus, I'm really talking about any role where you could get a bonus on top of what you already have. So you might always have a plus five whenever you attack, and you're trying to decide between a sword that will give you another plus two or one that will give you advantage. Then we can simply subtract five from, say, the armor of the monster you're trying to hit, and that becomes your target number. Then we can just compare advantage to the plus two. This just makes it a lot easier to compare so we don't have to differentiate between a plus five at advantage and a plus six at advantage. We've just got the odds of success with advantage and the odds of success with an extra bonus. Make sense? Cool, then let's start with the flat bonuses because they're a bit easier. 
What we want to do is find an equation where we can plug in our extra bonus and our target number and get the odds of success. Let's look at an example. Say you're rolling a 20-sided die, you're trying to hit a 13, and you add one to the roll. And remember, that's one more than what you would normally get. Well, if you roll a one, that's a total of two, that's a fail. If you roll a two, that's a total of three, that's still a fail. If you keep going like this, you'll see that the lowest number you could roll to succeed is a 12. 12 plus one is 13, so you've hit the target number. Anything above 11, so 12 through 20, you'll surpass the target 13, so you'll succeed. That means that out of the 20 possible outcomes of a 20-sided die, 11 will fail. So your odds of failing this roll are simply 11 out of 20, or 55%. To find the odds of succeeding, we can simply do one minus the odds of failing. In all cases where you didn't fail, you succeeded. So the odds of rolling a 13 or higher on a 20-sided die with a plus one bonus is 45%. Pretty simple, but counting out every single possible outcome for any roll with any bonus is a lot of work. So let's get a little lazy. Effectively, the odds of succeeding on any given roll is 1 minus the number of rolls that would fail over 20, which is the total number of possible rolls. So now we just need an easy way to figure out how many rolls would fail. Well, we know that in order to pass a roll, you need to meet or beat your target number. And remember from earlier, we can think of bonuses as subtracting from the target number. So if we simply subtract our extra bonus from the target number, we get the lowest number we can roll on the die to still pass. So if we take our target number, subtract our extra bonus, and then subtract one, we'll get the total number of rolls that will fail that check. Plugging that back into the equation, the odds of succeeding on any given roll is 1 minus the target number minus your bonus minus 1 divided by 20. Using this formula, we can plug in any bonus and any target number and get the odds of succeeding. Pretty simple. Now, we just need to do the same thing for rolling with advantage instead of a bonus, and we can easily compare the two to see which one gives you the better chance of succeeding. Now, obviously, adding in a second die makes things a bit trickier, but in essence, since we're always choosing the higher of the two dice, we're looking for the odds that at least one of them meets or beats the target number. You don't get anything special for rolling two really high numbers. As long as one of the dice succeeds, it doesn't matter what the other one is. In statistics, the way we do something like this is simply one minus the odds that neither dice hit the target, since those are the only two possible scenarios. Either none of them succeeded, or at least one of them succeeded. Maybe just one, maybe both. Again, it doesn't matter. Working with two dice at once is a little complicated, so let's just look at the dice one at a time. What are the odds that the first die does not meet your target number? Well, that's easy. It's basically the same thing that we just did, except here the bonus is always zero. So the odds that the first die fails is the target number minus one all over 20. Now looking at just the second die, the odds that this one fails is, well, exactly the same. One roll doesn't influence the other, they're totally independent. So these are the odds for both dice individually, but we're looking for the odds that both the first and the second die fail. Little helpful tip, in stats, whenever you see the word and, that means multiply. So the odds that both dice fail is target minus one over 20 times target minus one over 20. Since these two are the same exact thing, we can simplify this to target minus one over 20 squared. 
This two here basically just signifies that you're rolling two dice. If you were rolling with three dice and picking the highest, then that'd be a three, and so on. This gives us the odds of failing the roll, so to find the odds that at least one of the dice succeeds, we can simply do one minus that. And just like that, now we've got an equation where you can plug in any target number and find the odds of success when rolling with advantage. Great, so we've got an equation for the success rate of any bonus and with advantage, depending on the difficulty. Now we just need to see which one is better. To do that, let's write out an inequality using our two equations. Doing some algebra magic, we can rearrange this equation to get our two variables, target and bonus, on opposite sides. And if we do that, we find that you are better off taking a bonus to a roll instead of advantage if that bonus is greater than negative 20 times your target minus one over 20 squared plus your target minus one. You know, just a nice, real easy equation that you could quickly reference in the heat of combat. Now, don't worry, I'll make this easier to understand in a second. But first, there's one more wrench I want to throw into this whole problem. Oftentimes in these games, there's a rule where if you roll a 20, no matter what your target number was, you will automatically succeed. Even if the difficulty was 300 and you roll a 20 with no bonus, you still win. And the opposite is true for a one. No matter what, if you roll a one, you fail. Now, for the most part, even without this rule, unless the difficulty is insanely high, you're probably gonna pass with a 20 anyway. But there are a few outliers where this would matter. In any case where a 1 would have otherwise passed, you now still have a 1 in 20 chance of failing for a normal roll, or a 1 in 400 chance when rolling with advantage. Since you always take the highest, then both dice would need to be 1. And, in a case where a 20 would have otherwise failed, you now have a 1 in 20 or 5% chance of passing anyway on a normal roll, or a 9.75% chance of passing with advantage, which you can get from this formula for the odds that at least one of the dice is a 20. In all other cases, we can use the same equation from before. Now, I'll be the first to admit, this ain't the easiest thing to quickly reference or understand at a glance whether advantage or a bonus will be better for your situation. So to make things a bit easier to visualize, I created a table of all the odds of success for any check with any bonus or with advantage and no bonus. Using this, you can quickly look at the number you're trying to hit on the die across the top, come down to your extra bonus, and find the odds of passing. Then, you can compare that to the top row, which shows the odds of passing for advantage. To make things easier, I went ahead and highlighted all the cases where getting a bonus is better than advantage in green. Doing this reveals a pretty strange pattern. To start, if your difficulty is anywhere from 1 to 5, it's statistically better to have advantage every time, no matter how high your bonus is. Now, difficulties like these don't come up very often, but in the rare cases when they do, you've always got a 5% chance to roll a 1 and critically fail with just one die, but a very low chance to roll that low with both dice. But starting at a difficulty of 6, we see this kind of strange curve pattern. From 6 to 11, as the difficulty increases, you need a higher and higher bonus to be able to beat out advantage. But from 11 to 20, it flips, and now the bonus you need gets lower and lower. At first, this might seem counterintuitive, like why does it suddenly change? But remember, the equation for rolling with advantage was quadratic. That means that the odds aren't decreasing at a constant rate like they are with a single die. As the difficulty increases, the odds of succeeding with advantage decrease faster and faster. Essentially, rolling with advantage will help you avoid low numbers, 
but it won't necessarily help you hit higher numbers. All right, so after all that math, we've got a nice table that shows you all the cases where advantage will be better and when a flat bonus will be better. But this is only really helpful if you know the difficulty of the roll in the moment and are able to choose a bonus or advantage. And in these games, most of the time, you don't get that option in the moment. Normally, these types of abilities are something you would choose when building your character or leveling up or something outside of combat. And you have to choose whether you want a bonus or advantage for all the roles you're making in the future. Knowing that, we're less interested in whether advantage or a bonus will be better in any specific situation. We really need to know which one will be more helpful more often. Well, as it turns out, the random example that I gave at the beginning of choosing between a plus five or advantage was surprisingly apt. Because looking at our table for a plus four bonus, we see that you have a better chance of succeeding with the bonus if you're trying to hit a six or a 16 through 23. For everything else, advantage is better. However, moving down just one row, we see that a plus five bonus is better than advantage for any difficulty from six to 24, with the exception of an 11, that flip point where they're both equally likely to succeed. So if you're looking at an ability that could give you a plus four, eh, maybe skip it and take the advantage. But if you could add just one more, well, suddenly you can kick that second die to the curb because you've got all the pluses you need. Now, admittedly, this is a very complicated topic and we've really only scratched the surface. There are cases where you can get both extra bonuses and advantage, there's triple advantage, there's critical hits where rolling a 20 specifically will allow you to add extra damage. Uh, we could really be here all day. But hopefully this was enough to scratch that little curiosity itch and help you dominate the next pack of goblins you come across. And also in the description, I've included a link to the table from this video, as well as a calculator where you can plug in your bonuses, DC, and how many dice you're rolling, and you can find your odds of success in a second. If you're the type of person who doesn't like doing math at the table, but are tired of missing all the time, I got you. And you know, if you find it helpful at all, maybe drop a subscribe and a comment. It helps out the channel a lot and it's totally free. This is my first time talking about tabletop games on the channel, but if you got any more questions about the math of these games, let me know and maybe I'll talk about them in the future. And now my teleprompter is saying, insert ending joke here and I'm realizing that I never finished this script. I don't know, maybe Richard just like animate a, like a big die hitting me in the side of the head or something that, you know, that always, that's always funny, right? Right? No, no, not a real dog! And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.